There aren't very many fat bikes this big and powerful for less than $1,000. Most with similar specs are about $1,500 to $2,000, like Hemiway, Aventon, and Rad Power. This is the Favoto Flurry, and with the discount code I've got in the description, it brings the price down to $950, which I just don't see very often for all-terrain fat bikes. So what can you expect for $950? And how does it compare with other bikes with a similar price? I'm also gonna run you through the advanced settings and show you all the things you can do to customize and form the bike to your specific riding style. All right, so let's jump right in with power. The Flurry has got a 750 watt Bafang motor, which makes it the second bike in this price range with that size of motor. Most companies have a 500 watt, so you've got a lot of power. And in order to access that power, you'll need to hold down the power and minus button at the same time. That takes you to the speed limiter setting. And in that setting, you can set the bike from 12 up to 40. When set to 12, I topped out at seven miles per hour. And when set to 40, I hit 27. 27 miles per hour is the fastest I've gone for a bike less than $1,000. The next fastest was 22. So you've got five miles per hour faster with the Fury. Another way to change the speed, which is common in e-bikes, is by changing the pedal assist level. The lower the level, the slower you go. And you can go pretty slow on pedal assist one, depending on how many pedal assist levels you choose. In the settings, you can choose three or up to nine. So you can really spread out the power if you chose nine levels. Taking that a step further, you can change the power of each level. I had the bike programmed to five, and then set pedal assist one at 20% power, two at 40, three at 60, then 80, and 100 for five. Here's the difference in top speed between the five levels. Well, as you saw, a 20% difference translates to about five miles per hour faster. If you wanted a bigger spread between the levels, you can adjust each level from zero to 100%. So you could set pedal assist one to 100%, which would then top the bike out at 27 miles per hour. Not sure why you wanna do that, but you could. The point is you can set each one of those levels to the speed that you want. Now that's all the things that you can change as far as speed, so let's talk about acceleration. And the first is the motor reaction time. You can decide when you want the power to come on, either right away or after you get going. Even with the reaction time set to fast, it still took about a full revolution for the power to hit. That's why they were identical off the line for the first five feet. And that is something that I see a lot with more affordable bikes. Now there is the option for a slow and fast start. Here's the difference between the two. When you compare this acceleration to others in the same class, it's pretty much average. Yes, it's got a monstrous motor, but it also weighs 20 pounds than most other brands. And so that kind of balances things out. Now the Flurry comes with a half twist throttle that tops out the same as pedal assist. It's hard to tell, but there was two of me in that shot. Now the power of the throttle doesn't depend on the pedal assist level. It gives full power whether on pedal assist one or five. And I like when companies do this because if I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to pedal, you can still top the bike out using the throttle. So that was speed when compared with pedal assist. How about power off the line? Not a ton of difference here. Pedal assist was slightly faster. It's just really not a poppy bike. Well, the last thing with the throttle is that it does have a kill switch. I like that because it does prevent the bike from jumping on you as you're mounting it. Something that I've seen many riders do. So if you're worried about that, you just hit that red button. All right, well, moving on to hill climbing ability, this is where the Flurry didn't do too well, which I was surprised because it has that 750 watt motor, but it pretty much had the same hill climbing ability as other bikes in the same price range. I did have to help it out quite a bit on that steepest part. Well, moving on to brakes, this does come with mechanical brakes, which were smooth and had decent stopping power. When I was topping the bike out, it took about 25 feet to come to a stop. Now the levers are some of the nicer, cheaper filling levers for a bike less than a thousand bucks. They also have motor cutoff and are connected to the rear tail light. And so when you do squeeze them, that does light up. And that is something that I don't typically see for bikes in this price range. Range is the last test I did. After a full charge, which takes four to six hours, I took it out and averaged 25 miles per hour. And my app record is 16.34 miles with 976 feet of elevation gain. So if you're around my size, 60 miles is what you can expect when you're topping the bike out. And 60 miles, which is the top end of the range rating, is what you can expect if you ride it slower and nicer than I did. 
All right, so let's talk about a few more things that are standard for a $1,000 bike. The first are the grips, just your standard big and bulky stitched imitation leather grip. Then there's a SIS Index 7 speed shifter, a hard and large saddle with a carrying handle, 10 to 26 all-terrain tires, and a front fork suspension that you can lock out and adjust. What's not standard is the stem height and adjustable handlebars. That gives the bike a large rider size from 5'3 up to 6'4. I'm 5'11 and felt the bike fit my frame very well. It could easily fit a taller rider. However, for my wife who was 5'3, she found the bike to be a little much. A few other things that I liked were all the mount points. They had designed it for a rear rack and a front basket. I also liked the balance and the ride was solid feeling even when coming off a curb. The last thing I can tell you about the bike is that it does have a very bright head and tail light. So if you plan to do some night riding, you'll be plenty visible. All right, so what did you guys think? Is the Flurry a decent bike for $950? Out of the bikes that I've reviewed in this price range, I would say yes. But again, I wanna know what you guys think. And if you do wanna pick this up, I've got that code in the description that will knock off $150. As always, thanks for watching and take care.